You are live. Are we live? You are live. Yes. Hey guys, how's it going? We are so glad that it's Monday night again. It's the next edition of Monday Night Live. Yeah, live with you, right here with you in your kitchen or living room or bathroom, wherever. Hey, we, we don't, don't judge. judge. We don't judge. We don't judge. We're happy to be back with you. Tell us where you're where you're joining us from. I, I see some comments already. We got Australia, California, Massachusetts. England. London, England. Hey, Mr. Cole, how you doing? We missed you all last week. We did. Hope you had a good week, though. We were busy celebrating somebody's birthday. You want to tell them how old you are? 35. 35. Looks 18. Acts 17? That's judgmental. But we said we didn't judge. Well, we judge each other, <laughs> not anybody else. Okay. <laughs> uh, hope everybody's staying safe and warm. Yeah, here in Tennessee, currently it is icy and cold as a mofo. But we have electricity. So well, we have electricity. That's and, good. Yeah, heat and water. So so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. My so family in San Antonio, however, is going through the yeah. uh, rolling. What do they call it? Rolling, rolling blackouts. blackouts yeah. And then plus, I don't even think they have salt in plows for the roads because they never need them. Yeah, it's it's. A, yeah. Chaos there apparently. So yeah, prayers for our friends in Texas right now. <clears throat> and I think that's happening in a lot of places too. So I hope yeah. you guys are staying warm. And Absolutely. a lot of people probably won't be joining us tonight because they don't have electricity. So yeah, yeah. So but you can always catch us on the replay on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, if you if you're not able to join us live, you can go back. If if we we're going to try to answer a ton of questions tonight, and you can go back if you missed an answer and listen to it again, because I have found and my, I'm a very audible learner. The more I listen to something, the more it sinks in. So Shanghai, China. Welcome. Hey, Shanghai. Welcome, welcome. That's I would awesome. love to go to Shanghai one day. Always away. All right. So drop your questions in the comments. Like he said, we're going to answer as many as possible. We can't Nisha. answer every single one. Try to are you gonna talk over me? No, again? I didn't. <laughs> I was on in a holding pattern. Try to keep them brief because if you make it too long, it cuts it off and we can't read it. Yeah. And then also it makes it harder for us to answer your questions. Short and sweet yet relevant. And I'm going to try to keep, I've been instructed by my manager <laughs> to keep my answers brief. And so uh, for some more complicated things, I may just say, hey, I've got a YouTube video about that. So if I do that, I'm not just blowing you off. There, all the information you need is on that YouTube video. You don't have to keep it that brief, but like, you know. Go watch my YouTube video. Next question. Yeah. Like no, that? No. Is that what you, no, it's too much. Okay. All right. uh, also, we're trying out the Wi-Fi here, so hopefully it's working okay. It seems to be okay. I've seen a few people say we're blurry. We're not that attractive anyway, so you're yeah. welcome. Right. You can actually just lay down your phone or, or laptop mm -hmm. and listen to this like a podcast. You don't even have to watch because we're, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. she's hot, but I'm just kind of so-so. You're sweet. Okay, right, Beckett is with my parents right, right. down the road. So yeah. Did you guys cool. see, if you don't follow Beckett on Instagram, his be handle is Beckett Did It. He took his first snow sled ride today on one of the little discs, and uh, he liked it, but it also scared him a little bit, so make sure and check that out on his Instagram. Okay, Rebecca wants to know, how do I show the PhD lovingly <laughs> for a diabetic parent? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, multiple ways to do it. One is you could say, hey, mom or dad, I found this doctor on YouTube and he has taken care of diabetics for 20 years. And he's saying that this diet really helps and, and maybe even you won't have to take pills or injections. That'd be a good strategy. Also, your mom or dad or your brother or sister, they need to see your progress. They need to see how you've improved your health with low carb keto, carnivore, fasting, ketovore. Right. And because uh, no matter, even though you may have powder butt syndrome, if they see that you've literally transformed your health, your parents are going to listen to you, your aunt and uncle. They're going to listen to you because obviously you, you did something right because you've transformed your own health. So lead by example. Say, here's this doctor on YouTube. You should let, let me get this on here for you and you can watch it and see what you think. Maybe he's crazy. I don't know. Patty says, do you need to add electrolytes on carnivore? Some people do. Some people never do. I, can, I think it's kind of an individual thing. It depends on how depleted you are in electrolytes when you come to keto or carnivore. I think it depends on your overall health level, your age, maybe even your gender. Uh, but some people never use electrolytes on keto and carnivore, and they do great. Other people use them religiously. I, I use them every day. I use the daily mineral drops, which contains electrolytes that Keto Chow makes. 
and, and I don't know if I need it or not. I may not need them anymore. But if I take some electrolytes and I don't need them, I'm just going to urinate them away. So it's for me, it's <clears> just better safe than sorry kind of thing. I feel better with electrolytes and I feel better <clears> with a lot of salt. But there are a lot of carnivores that don't use salt at all yep. and do really well. They don't yep. use liver supplements. They don't eat organ meats. This is there's we don't have anything to say. Yes, you need this because yep. there's not any yep. research. But if you'd like to donate, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Sean Baker is raising money to fund research for this exact purpose so we can say here is the evidence-based research that this is not only healthy but very healthy yep. and all of that stuff. Um, I think you just Google Sean Baker Carnivore Fund. Yeah, I would recommend that, that <clears throat> most everyone should use some kind of mineral supplement or, or electrolyte supplement when they first start and use plenty of salt. But one of the beautiful things about the proper human diet spectrum of eating is that you don't have to stay at one place and you can experiment after you've improved your health. You can try a month with way less salt then try a month with more salt. No electrolytes, lots of electrolytes. See where you feel best. Because some people are like me, sure, they can have, they actually feel better when they use their electrolytes. Other people can't really tell if they're helping or not. Okay. Yeah. Sorry if the feed is blurry, guys. It's <clears throat> snowing yeah. a lot. And we have satellite internet, so I'm sure that that, yeah. you that know, interferes be. with it. But at least it hasn't cut out. All right. Angie wants to know why are potatoes so bad and are sweet potatoes okay? Yeah. So potatoes are very high in carbohydrates, very high in starch, uh, and that's going to spike your blood sugar. Now, if you just wanted to have a tablespoon of potatoes because you freaking love them, I don't think that's a big deal. But you got to count those carbohydrates, okay? Sweet potatoes are somewhat less bad than. Irish potatoes are just your standard potato, but that doesn't make them good. For most of us, they're still going to have way too many carbohydrates, too much starch. Uh, potatoes are actually quite nutrient devoid. They don't really have any meaningful nutrition. And one of the core concepts of the proper human diet is that you want to eat only nutrient dense foods. You want your food to be full of vitamins and minerals and amino acids and fatty acids. And potatoes, whether sweet or Irish, just they ain't that. They, definitely they'll keep you from starving to death, but they are not nutrient powerhouses like meat. Uh, Dapper Date says, my church is starting the Easter feast on March 1st. It's a Daniel fast, basically no meats, treats, or sweets. <clears throat> what can I eat other than meat during this fast? I w I, well, I would actually fast. If it's a religious thing, I think it might even be more meaningful to you to do a true fast. It's not a month, is it? Is it just like a day? I don't know. Oh, I've never okay. done yeah. the Daniel fast, I mean, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know what the Daniel fast is, but now if it's, if it's a seven day or a, you know, a month long thing, you might want, not want to fast the whole time. Um, if I were, if I had to eat something I, and I couldn't have meat, I guess I would, can you have eggs? Is that me? I think we don't know enough about it. Yeah, I don't know what a Daniel fast is. I'll have to look that up. Uh, ask me again next week and I'll, I'll fill in more details. But if it's a short fast, I would just truly fast. Can I would have a water fast. Can you eat eggs? Is that considered a meat? Because then if you can, then I would go with eggs. Yeah, if you can eat eggs, I would just live on eggs. Yeah, literally. You, you're going to get so much nutrition from doing that. Sorry. I, I read the Daniel fast a very long time ago, like 20 years. <laughs> um, Latrice says keto coffee. How do I drink it? Yeah. So keto coffee, the whole point of it is to prolong a fast in which your insulin level stays very low. And so you don't want any carbs or uh, any uh, protein in your keto coffee. Some people call it bulletproof coffee because those things raise your insulin too much. And that's going to turn off your fat burn. So if you're trying to fast longer without eating real food, you can put a little bit of fat in your coffee, coconut oil. I like butter. You can use a little splash of heavy cream, but it's not completely zero carb or zero protein. So for some people, that's going to raise their insulin enough to turn off fat burning. If you don't need keto coffee or bulletproof coffee, then don't drink it. There's nothing magical about it. It's a tool to keep your insulin low for longer so you can burn more fat. That's what it's for. Okay. The Daniel Fest is 21 days. <clears throat> yeah, don't. Yeah, probably not a water fast for 21 days unless you're really hardcore. But eggs would be great. I don't know if you can have any kind of dairy on that. If so, I mean, if I could have eggs and dairy, I would just live on buttered scrambled eggs. eggs. Yeah, cheesy and cheesy eggs. Yeah. Miriam, Miriam, Miriam. Sorry. 
Very uh, I'm a nursing mom. Can I do keto or carnivore diet while nursing? Yes, you can. 100%. I did. I, I'm still breastfeeding, but we're waning, so I'm not breastfeeding as much. But I ate carnivore immediately after having back. What are you watching? I'm, I'm just thinking about the discussions you and Beckett have when he's sitting in your um, lap, and he's trying to give you yeah, get, we bargain. get to the itty. It, it, that's what he calls it. <clears throat> he wants some itty. So I think as long as you had a keto or carnivore pregnancy, it's completely fine. If you didn't, it's still <clears throat> fine, but you should slowly transition to keto carnivore, not yep. just cut off the parts <clears throat> like that. You don't want to shock your system and deplete your supply. Yep. It's not the keto or carnivore that's depleting your supply. It's just that shock to your system the of change. the change. Yep. So you don't want to stretch your body out. The number one priority is feeding your baby. So just go down 10, 20 carbs slowly and eventually you transition back to keto carnivore. If you had a keto carnivore pregnancy, then you should be just fine. Absolutely. Now also tell Miriam, and What's going to really help her milk supply? So electrolytes and water. Uh, I never had to force myself to drink water. I was constantly thirsty. And most women <clears> have <throat> that natural thirst the minute that baby latches. And then also snuggling skin to skin is going to boost your supply better than any of those stupid cookies in the breastfeeding aisle ever would. Yep. Skin to skin and breast to baby. Yep. Not pumping. Not that pumping's bad. But in the first few months, I would do mostly skin to skin, skin, to skin because that's going to promote that. Uh, did salt, let down. getting plenty of salt, did that help your supply? Yeah, it seems to me in the women that I've talked to that salt is the most important electrolytes kit to Sodium promote chlorine. your supply. So, yeah. Okay. Laura, this is a question we get a lot. Any vitamins or supplements needed while on keto? Uh, very few. If you're eating a, a variety of keto foods, you're going to be getting so much nutrition that you won't need many. The most common things that people are still deficient in, even on keto or carnivore, is iodine and vitamin D. Those are the two things. And then some of the other minerals that are just not in our food supply anymore because of the way things are grown in our depleted soils and the way things, the way plants and animals have been not genetically modified, but bred and crossbred over the generations. We've been, we've bred them so that they're big and beautiful and juicy and pretty. We haven't really, we didn't, nobody, no, literally nobody thought to breed them so they were more nutritious. And so iodine and vitamin D are the two that really pop up to the top of the list. Plus uh, the, just the assorted essential minerals. Uh, and that's about it. Everything else you're going to get on your keto diet. And if you live in a sunny climb, you're going to get your vitamin D. Uh, Yo Mama 1375 Yo says, I usually do intermittent fasting 24 and once a week 44 4. Can I do 44 4 every other day or is that too much? Thanks. I love what you're doing. It depends. It depends on what your current uh, body fat percentage is. So, in other words, <laughs> if you've got lots of fat that you need to lose <clears throat> and you mind your electrolytes and get plenty of water and plenty of salt, yes, yeah, absolutely fine to do that. Uh, but now if you don't have much weight to lose, it's probably not going to benefit you. It's not, probably not going to be worth the effort. Uh, if you have a ton of inflammation, if you have autoimmune condition, then maybe maybe it would still benefit you. But that's kind of a uh, that's a question I, that we could only answer if we knew your complete story. Rachel says, what are some good on the go snacks? I've been tra I'm going to be traveling with my toddler soon. Mm. Very good question. Yes. Uh, for Beckett, his go to snacks are. Bacon in a Ziploc, in a Ziploc bag. bag. Yep. Uh, he likes cashews. I try not to let him eat a lot of nuts, but he really enjoys them and they're easy to pack on the go. Yep. Um, some cheese, the baby bell cheese that comes in the wax wrapper. He really likes that. That's something yeah. else we use. Um, that's probably, that's then, well, yeah, it. that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also cut up some little strips of steak and put in a Ziploc bag. That's a protein bar. Uh, you could do boiled eggs in Ziploc. You could do, um, what else could you do? Uh, Beckett, any any ideas, this. guys? Tell us in the comments. What's your, yeah, what's your keto or carnivore travel snacks? What I've come to do over the, a few years of doing this is I just don't snack. And but Nisha, you're not a toddler. Right. Very, <laughs> Nisha very seldom snacks. The toddlers, they, they probably need some snacks in the in the in their kid bag. And so I understand that. Okay. Nicole, keto pregnancy. I failed my one hour glucose screening. What can I do to pass the three hour? This happens um, to a lot of us, apparently. 
because we're so low keto, low carb, no sugar, that that huge dose of sugar yeah, it's a huge immediately dose. spikes us. Now we bounce right back, right? but they don't care about right. that. That's so <clears throat> what I did was the week before my glucose screening, I upped my carbs and I upped them with real food. I didn't go eat candy bars and you Green know, crack. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> food yeah. crack. Yeah. But I did lots of strawberries and nuts and that kind of thing and I passed so yeah. you can maybe try that and I, I very much doubt you fail your three hour yeah because yeah. it's gonna come back to I agree and so I mean, <clears throat> there are millions of women out there who are pre-diabetic or at least hyperinsulinemic and they have no idea because their doctors never check the labs that you need to, to know that and so if you're if you've just started keto recently you may still be pre-diabetic and you and your doctor just don't even know it that's very very common Travis wants to say, hey, Travis. thanks, Dr. Barry and Nurse Nisha. I'm losing weight and feeling amazing doing ketovore. Woo. You guys are awesome. I laugh when my friends and family tell me they think I'm crazy eating meat and eggs and no carbs, but yeah. I'm feeling great. Way yeah. to go, Travis. Humans have only been doing that for, you know, 250,000 years. So it's <laughs> dumb. You shouldn't eat meat. Uh, Leah, Leah, this is something that people talk about when they're new to keto a lot. Popcorn. So Leah says, do you eat popcorn with butter and salt? I don't eat popcorn ever. Uh, first of all, I'm not a big fan. But secondly, popcorn is 100% carbs and starch. There's literally no nutrition whatsoever in it. Uh, to me, it's not filling at all. I mean, how many times back in the day when we used to eat junk, we would get the lar the biggest damn tub of, it was a barrel of popcorn. And we would eat the entire thing, go back and get a refill, eat all that. And then we'd go out to dinner afterwards. Like it's not satiating at all. It's not filling and it has no nutrition. Therefore, why would you eat that? Yeah, we don't recommend eating it. A lot of people do because it doesn't kick you out of ketosis. But if you're someone who's wanting to do this for health benefits and not just weight loss, then yeah. I would yeah. stay away from the popcorn. Corn also contains a protein called zen, which for many, many people is very inflammatory to either the gut, the skin, or the joints. Uh, Z-I-E-N, if you want to look that up. All grains, all seeds have some kind of protein, like, just like wheat has gluten. From, and for many people, they have a skin flare-up when they eat corn, and so they don't make the connection the corn caused that. So if you're going to eat popcorn or any other corn, pay careful attention to how your guts, your joints, and your skin behave, including your scalp. If you have a flare-up of dandruff, that could be your inflammation. Uh, Lorraine says, how low carb would you recommend for someone with Hashimoto's? I tried carnivore, but my body went into shocks and I had uncontrollable shakes and tremors. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So how, what would you say? Well, I have Hashimoto's and me personally, I slowly transitioned from keto to carnivore prior to pregnancy. I did keto while I was pregnant because I couldn't eat meat. I had meat aversions and then went back to carnivore, but now I'm ketovore and that's where I feel best. And basically that means I eat mostly meat eggs, cheese, animal products like that. And then I add in some veg that I feel good on because Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. We tend to be more sensitive to vegetables. Did you know it bothers people when I say veg? I've gotten that comment. Really? Like, vegetables. Can I even Ve say it right? I can't even vegetables. say vegetables right. Okay, so find out what you're sensitive to. Cut those veg peas out. <laughs> well, what's y'all's favorite way of saying it? Do you say veg? Because I know some of our listeners say just say veg. Some people say veggies. And some people say vegetables. Yeah. I what know. do you say? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Lorraine, I have a video on Ketobor over on my channel. I have two, actually, and he has one as well. So go check that out. Yeah. And it's it's very much how you feel. So just pay attention yeah. to what foods make you feel best. And I would say you probably transitioned really fast, maybe. And that's why you got the shakes and the tremors. Yeah. Okay, doo, 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 doo. Pamela, we'll come back, Pamela. Good question, Pamela. Where did you go? Okay, there she is. Pamela said, my family mentioned scurvy. I do not know what to say. Yeah, and so um, when you're eating a high-carbohydrate diet, you need to get plenty of vitamin C in your diet. You may even need to take a vitamin C supplement because sugar and vitamin C basically use the same sort of receptor to get inside your cell. And so if you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, that means a high sugar diet. And therefore your vitamin C is competing. Your body can't really use the vitamin C. So you have to take mega doses when you're eating very low carb. That may also means very low sugar. 
And that way, the, the little bit of vitamin C contained in meat, uh, the lot of bit of vitamin C contained in liver, and then the little bit of vitamin C, if you're, if you're still keto, you're getting plenty of vitamin C for you because you're eating a low sugar diet, low carb diet. And so the vitamin C is not having to compete with the, the sugar to get inside your cells and do its job. June says, how do I know if I'm fat adapted and how do I know if I have insulin resistance? First, let me just say, we have to say keto adapted because we get flagged when we say fat adapted <laughs> because YouTube and Facebook think yeah. we're calling people fat. So if we say keto adapted, that is the equivalent of fat adapted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a YouTube video that goes into lots of detail about how you know when you're keto adapted. Uh, but just in a nutshell, you will notice the difference in how you feel. You're going to, you're going to be more calm and centered and relaxed. You're going to have sustained energy instead of having, remember the highs and lows when you used to eat high carb, uh, you're not going to be as hungry as you were before. Uh, some people forget to eat for like hours and then they'll look up and they've missed a meal. That's the, those are some of the hints that you know that you're fat adapted. Uh, but watch the YouTube video for more information. I've got one too on my channel. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dan E says, any major concerns with keto and Crohn's or the lack of a colon? The, the concern is, is that anybody who's watching this, unless you're a, a cat or a dog, watching it with your master, you are a human being and therefore you need to eat the proper human diet somewhere on that spectrum. Whether you have Crohn's, whether you have thyroid disease, whether you have liver disease, kidney disease, it doesn't matter. No human being should eat a high carbohydrate diet. There is no medical condition in which you need to eat a high carb diet. There's no medical condition or, or post-surgical condition where you need to eat a lot of highly processed junk food. Does that make sense? And so what keto is, is meat and veg. I mean, that's about as natural as you can get. But I'll tell you this, since you mentioned Crohn's, many people with Crohn's, irritable bowel, ulcerative colitis, uh, the IBS, both uh, constipation predominant and diarrhea predominant, they thrive on a carnivore diet. So uh, don't be afraid of eating meat and veg because that's what human beings have eaten ever since we've been on this planet. If you see someone ask a question like, can I do this with this fill in the blank and you do that with that fill in the blank, feel free to answer Please. them in the yeah. comments and yeah. give them your experience because that's a great way for them yeah. to feel okay yep. doing that because there's someone that also is suffering with that. Yep specific problem. Yeah, there are many people tonight watching this who are brand new, just like they just heard about keto and now they're going to find out what it is. If you're an old hand at keto or carnivore, you've been doing this for a minute, please reach out to them and say, hey, little keto brother or sister, I'm here. I have the same condition as you. Let's talk about this. Yeah. T says, can diet help a toddler with developmental delays? If so, how can the diet be implemented if the child is a very picky eater? This is a very important question. Um, you know, T, there's an epidemic of developmental delay in, in kids all over the world, and it's mainly in kids eating a modern, highly processed, junky diet. So I absolutely believe with all my heart that the diet is at least a huge part of it. Maybe not all of it, but I, absolutely a child with any sort of developmental delay needs to eat a proper human diet that's full of real meat and real vegetables. Is that what one vegetables? Did you notice what one the? Uh, uh, it was a lot of different. A lot of veg, people veggie, said veg, vegetables. veggie, veggie, you know. But like, yeah, you, and then also a child with no development delay also needs a proper human diet. They need to eat meat and veg. That's what human beings were built on. Um, yes. For those of you asking, uh, my bottom is fine. If you didn't know, I fell and busted my butt. <laughs> yeah. Was that yesterday? Is that on your Instagram? IG? It's the on video. Instagram, the video. Go watch the video on her Instagram. It is. I did not laugh out loud. Uh, I was very concerned about her. It's hilarious. You did laugh. Yes, you did. Uh, the chicken fell. I fell. Brett Butler fell. It was <laughs> hilarious. If you need a laugh, there you go. <coughs> yeah. Tina, Tina is. Uh, we're going to lean towards newbie questions tonight because it seems like there's a lot of newbies yeah, on absolutely. here. If you're new, type new in the comments. Tina says, what are your suggestions on fat bombs? So fat bombs are a great tool for people who are just starting keto uh, to 
not eat junk food because you're, you may still be addicted to the junk food, Tina. And if that's the case, then you need to make up either some chocolate fat bombs or some savory fat bombs. And don't forget that egg yolks and uh, bacon and butter, those are great fat bombs. You don't have to make this big elaborate recipe fat bomb. You can just literally get the, bar, the stick of butter and take a bite of butter. That's going to hack your hunger hormones and your satiety hormones and turn off your hunger. Also, a pinch of salt does the same thing for many people, but I, I don't. We don't recommend using fat bombs forever. Yeah, we talk about them as a tool that a transition you can use to, yeah. to get, become keto adapted. Right. And once you get to that point, then you don't use. We don't use them anymore no. ever. Yeah. The only time we ever eat them is when we're using them as a treat. They're not actually being used as fat bombs. It's like, oh, I'd like something sweet, and that's yeah. on like Valentine's Day. We had. At all, you know? yeah. So just, you know, keep that in mind. And if you're someone who's addicted to carbs and sweets, then I would lean toward the savory instead of the sweets. Yeah. Fat bombs are a lot like keto coffee. You might not even need to use them at all. And so if you're able to, you know, eat your first meal of the day and then not have any temptation to snack until your second meal of the day, then you don't need a fat bomb. There's nothing magic about fat bombs. There's nothing magic about keto coffee. They are a tool that you use so that you don't spike your blood sugar and spike your insulin. Yeah, a lot of people will use the macro apps and will, I've read women go into the fridge and eat four fat bombs because they weren't hungry, but they hadn't hit their fat macro for the day and that's just not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not hungry, you don't ever need to hit a fat macro. What you wanna make sure and do is never go over your carb macro limit. That's the most important macro. But hitting your fat macro, if you're not hungry, that doesn't matter, you don't have to do that. Uh, Viola says, is keto and fasting beneficial to healing and or protecting our brain? And do you have a video addressing this? Yeah, I've got one or two videos about brain issues and keto on my YouTube channel. It's absolutely vital. First of all, your brain is made of fat and protein. That's what it's made of. There are no carbohydrates. Your brain's not made of, of carbs. So you need to be eating all of the building materials in order to replace your neurons. Now, neurons in your brain are not replaced nearly as fast as other cells in our body. Some cells are replaced completely, like your the lining of your intestine is replaced every few days. But your brain, it takes a long time. And then also, you don't want to be eating a diet that's going to spike your blood sugar and spike your insulin because that's going to glycate or gum up your neurons, your brain cells. And that's going to tend to make them start to... to um, develop amyloid plaques and other bad things that you don't want in your brain. So eating a proper human diet is vital for continued long-term brain health. Nicole says, I've been keto over a year, no complaints on the bowel movement until I stopped my high blood pressure medicine. Now it's very problematic. Is there a correlation? It, perhaps, yeah. The Stopping the blood pressure medication may have changed the, the fluid balance chemistry in your enterocytes, the little cells inside your large intestine, they pull water out or put water in depending. And if you were taking a fluid pill, that may have temporarily messed up the way your cells balance fluid. That should not be permanent. That should go away. Uh, it may have also changed your gut bacteria a little bit. And again, that's temporary. That's not going to be permanent. Most people, when they have a problem like this, it's from a few days to a week or two, and then it's back to normal. All right. Livia, I'm suffering with chronic anemia and iron supplements aren't helping me, only causing me GI issues. What can I do? Yeah, so there's several things you can do. First of all, make sure you're avoiding all grains, okay, and maybe even seeds because all of these things contain lectins and phytates and other things that can bind up the iron mm. that's in your diet. So for someone like you, spinach has iron in it but it's bound up, okay? It's bound up by the fiber in there and the other things. And your body can't, can only get to about 10% of the, of the iron that's in the spinach. And so spinach is not a great source of iron for most of us. Whereas iron in meat, iron in liver is highly available, bioavailable and bioabsorbable. And so I would, I would tell you to greatly increase the amount of red meat you eat. And the, if you're not currently eating liver, you got to learn to like liver or you can, uh, until, until you learn to like liver, 
you can take uh, ancestral supplements, liver capsules. I've got a link up here on Facebook and down here on YouTube. But I want you to learn to like liver eventually. But you can take those until. But that those are the things that are going to give you iron that you can actually absorb and use. Lalissa or Lalisa? I'm sorry. I'm horrible with names. If a patient of yours has PCOS, what is the course of action uh, that you would tell them to take? Step one, very low carb keto or carnivore. Very, very low carb. Uh, PCOS is basically diabetes of the ovaries. Okay. And when your insulin level is chronically high, that messes up your female hormones as well. It can make your testosterone and estrogen go in directions that, that are not good for your ovaries and not good for you. You've got to lower the carbohydrates big time. And that that's, I mean, that's step one, two, and three right there. But the vast majority of uh, patients that we have with PCOS and friends on line with PCOS, their symptoms plummet when they go very, very low carb, I would say under 20 total grams a day of carbohydrates or less, you're going to notice that within a few weeks time, your PCOS symptoms are substantially better. So be careful because you might get pregnant. So if you that's don't want true. to get pregnant, that's true. then uh, make sure you're taking mm -hmm. care of that. <laughs> many women with infertility issues, not every infertility issue, right. but many of them, uh, they get knocked up on keto. And this because it puts your hormones back where they should be. Yeah, so I don't know if you're wanting to get pregnant or not, but just just know that yep. that is a risk. Yep. Mandy says, will keto reverse coronary artery plaque? If anything's going to reverse it, it's going mm. to be a proper human diet, right? Now, I don't know if you can reverse 100% of the plaque buildup, but we have multiple examples of coronary artery calcium scores that got lower, they got better, after six months of keto, after a year of carnivore. That's happened so many times. Um, a good friend of mine who's also a keto physician, he's got hundreds of reports where his patients have lower um, coronary artery calcium scores now, which is that judges the plaque buildup than, than they had a year ago. And he has all his patients on a keto diet. <clears throat> Jennifer says, I like bread. And I'm trying to get on board with keto. What do you think about keto bread recipes? Keto bread is uh, much less bad than just regular bread from the grocery. Mm. Well, if you're looking at recipes, then that's good. First yeah. of all, that's the way to go. Don't mm -hmm. buy the stuff in the store because usually it has lots of things that we yep. don't recommend. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, again, this, this is for some people who love bread. They need that keto bread, that mug cake, that that you know keto whatever for a while to until they break that addiction and break that cycle. But what I would hope and probably predict for you, Jennifer, is that after six months from now, you're going to be like, yeah, I don't really make that anymore. I just don't miss it because that's what most of us notice. Um, I would stick with the recipes that are the simplest. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of very complicated recipes yeah. out there and. Um, for me, none of them were any better than the other. Yep. Honestly, what is it? 90 second bread? 90 second bread. Easy, yep. fast, and it tastes yep. good. Uh, Keto Connect, they have recipes for, I don't know, 20 different kinds so of mug cakes. Things. They also have a recipe for a pretty decent keto bread that I people have told us tastes pretty decent. Uh, check out Keto Connect on YouTube. They got good stuff there. If, and, but, but also keep in mind, Dr. Barry said, don't, don't make that keto bread forever. We've been trained that bread has to be part of every meal and, and you have to eat bread every day or I don't know, you'll die or something, but that's not true at all. Okay. You don't need bread. Uh, Steve says, uh, will nighttime dry mouth xylitabs? Oh, it depends on the ingredients. Break it fast. It depends on the, you got to read the ingredients. If there's sugar, then definitely it's going to break it fast. Uh, there are, there are um, dry mouth sprays that you can get that are sugar free, uh, that have glycerin and other stuff. Look for one that's sugar free if yours is not. Hey, it's Roxy. Hey, uh, Roxy. hey Roxy. I'm in nursing school. Bless you. Bless you. Um, and started keto last year and feel great, but I got bored eating the same thing. My grades decrease when I'm not on keto. How can I help myself? Girl, yeah. get you a cookbook. Yeah. I recommend the five ingredient keto cookbook. And yep. here's why, because five ingredients is the most you're going to need. 
So they're simple because you're exhausted and you don't have time for that, yeah. you know? And the ingredients are cheap. Well, I guess, yeah. yeah. It depends on what you think cheap is. And then also she has so many alternatives for all the things that you probably want right now, like pizza and nachos and all that kind of stuff. I think it's on sale right now on Amazon. Last time I checked, it was like $9 or something. So... I don't, I don't have a link in the notes. Um, Five Ingredient Keto Cookbook by Jen Fish. And then yeah. also Maria Emmerich. All her books are good, but her recipes are a bit more complicated because they're like gourmet. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is nursing school type recipes. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I used. Um, Nareen says, I am on carnivore for a week now. I'm trying it to cure and alleviate my GERD. Can eggs inflammate my gut? And can I pepper... My food. Maybe and maybe. Uh, for some people, it seems like their gut, at least for a while, is sensitive to egg whites. So separate your eggs and try just egg yolks for a few days. If it seems like the egg is is causing your heartburn to flare up. Uh, also, what was the second part of that question? Can I pepper? Oh, uh, pepper. Yeah. Some some carnivores. I, I use pepper all the time, and I used to have severe daily heartburn that was terrible. I have no heartburn now at all. Zero, none, ever. I can't even remember the last time. And I pepper stuff all the time. I put a ton of pepper on my fried eggs this morning. But other carnivores, like our friend Amber O'Hearn and our friend Michaela Peterson, they, if they use pepper, it immediately causes inflammation. So that's one of those things you got to figure out for yourself. Sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze. Gameplay. Did you just that? It's such a child. Gameplay Planet says, how can I lose fat in the chest area? It bothers me. So if you're talking about man boobs, then you absolutely got to cut the carbohydrate intake way, way down in your diet. Do I have a man boobs video? I thought I did on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, you, but but the, the number one, two, and three is cut the carbs. Eat lots of fatty meat and a little bit of veg that's going to keep your insulin level low and that's going to allow your body to burn stored fat and that's what man boobs are is stored fat okay fat boy with a p fat boy. uh what veg should i reintroduce i've been carnivore for six months it's your choice. That's part of the beauty of this proper human diet spectrum is if you love Brussels sprouts, that can be your veg. If you love spinach, that can be your veg. If you, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. But uh, uh, when you do reintroduce a vegetable, pay careful attention to your skin, your joints, your gut, and your mental clarity and speed, because those are the pl most common places where inflammation is going to rear its ugly head. And so if you have a problem with that veg, and you go, oh, you know, I can't think straight today. I'm all foggy and cloudy after I ate the Brussels sprouts. You may need to put Brussels sprouts on the no-no list. And then re a, a week later, reintroduce another veg. And uh, hopefully you'll find a list of five or ten delicious veg that you can eat. And they don't bother you. Kelly Carter. Hey, Kelly. That's a good name. You sound like a country music singer. Here's Kelly Carter. Doesn't that sound like a country music singer? Who's up next, Lil Reddy? Kaylee Carter. All right. Okay, sorry. Type 1 diabetic, and in the rare cases that her sugar falls low, does the small amount of sugar she needs to take, will it knock her out of ketosis? Yes, but that's okay. Okay, until you get – and if you're, you must be working with your doctor if you're working with a type 1 diabetic. Don't try to do this on your own. It's possible, but it's not – why do that? Work with your doctor to lower the insulin as you're lowering the carbs. Uh, but but if she's starting to have a hypo episode, you give her a little bit of sugar. Now, keep in mind, she does not need the full eight ounces of orange juice. For most type ones, unless they just slam the insulin, a sip or two of orange juice. That's all the sugar she's going to need to get the blood sugar back up. But at that point, hypo is dangerous, right? That can really, that can hurt you. So you don't, I don't care if you're knocked out of ketosis for an hour or two. You got to get the blood sugar back up to 60. Does that make sense? But work with your doctor if you're not already doing so. But uh, type 1 diabetics flourish on keto and carnivore. But work with your doctor as you transition. Christine, my girl, Christine. There you thank go. Thank you. So I wanted to say it was $6, but then I was like, if I undershoot it, then they're going to be mad. $6.76 for the five ingredient wow. keto 
That is filing your taxes. so worth the money. I'm telling you, it's a huge book. I think there's 300 and some of them recipes in there. They're all really good and really, really easy. Yeah, and it's like a little over a dollar per ingredient. I mean. The price, that's great. They're really, really good. If you're going to buy a cookbook, this is the one I recommend, especially right now because it's $6.76. I mean, you can't beat that. No, you can't beat that. Jen Fish is pretty cool. Too. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Brian. Brian says, thanks to my dad for referring me to you both. Literally saving my life. I will continue to refer others. Keto for life. Thank you so much. And, and don't forget to share your story. We're always sharing, but one of the things that we always ask people to do is share your success, whether it's a, uh, the, the scale or it's a non-scale victory. People need to hear your story. Yeah, you're going to annoy some, a few people. That's fine. They can get over it. But what you're going to do eventually is you're going to find somebody who your story resonates with them personally. Even if it's just one person, think about that. Think you about the somebody's power. Life. You literally you. can transform somebody's life. Yeah. Turn their health completely around. That's powerful. And you can do that. Now, I'm talking to you. You can do that, but you can't do that if you're hiding your light under a bushel. You have to tell your story. And of course, when somebody says, oh, my God, you look great. What did you do? You're going to share your story. But I'm saying you need to be proactive and say, hey, I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> I know I'm preaching keto, but let me tell you what this diet did for me. Don't be afraid to do that once or twice a month on uh, social media. That, that's how you're going to save somebody's life. And that's why I've made that repository of YouTube videos. Is so when you, if you see somebody and they're like, oh, I've got this terrible psoriasis, I can't do keto, you can be like, you know what? There's this uh, video by a doctor about psoriasis. You should watch it. That's what those videos are for. Is so you can literally just take them, plug and play, whatever they got, and transform their health. Joe says, which test is more important, C peptide or an A1C? Hmm. They're both very, very That's important. A good question. And I'm going to try to quickly tell you why. OK, so the A1C gives you a rough, not perfect, but rough three month average of what your blood sugar has been doing for the last three months. Right. It's not a perfect test, but it's very good for the majority of people. But your insulin level, it doesn't tell you anything about insulin. So you need a C-peptide or a fasting insulin level. They're, they're pretty much interchangeable. That's going to tell you how much insulin your pancreas has been having to squirt out to cope with the current amount of carbohydrates you've been eating. Does that make sense? And so you may have a beautiful A1C, but your C-peptide still be high. That means you're hyperinsulinemic, but you've got your blood sugar problem fixed. So you're eating low enough carb that by working double time, your pancreas can keep your blood sugar under control. But you don't want your pancreas working double time. That's why you want to have a normal A1C, but also a normal C-peptide. That's when you know you're eating the proper human diet for you. Those two tests literally will tell you, are you eating a proper human diet or are you still eating too many carbohydrates for your personal biochemistry? Alicia, intermittent fasting and breastfeeding. My son is 17 months and we are very established. Girl, you're good. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I right. started intermittent fasting two months after I had Beckett and I never had any issues with my breastfeeding. I have intermittent fast now. He's 15 months, yeah. especially I went 17 months. You should not have any issues yeah. whatsoever. But I always say this to breastfeeding moms. Eat when you're hungry, okay? Don't force the fast. If you are hungry, eat. Yep. If you're not hungry, yep. don't eat. And so if you're keto adapted and you know you're eating enough fat and protein and vitamins and minerals, you're getting enough food for you and the baby, that's fine. If you're not hungry, don't eat. But if you're hungry, you need to eat. Uh, also, let's, let me just define intermittent fasting because I don't want any breastfeeding moms out there to not know what the intermittent part really means. When we say that, we're talking about time-restricted eating, okay? And so I think it's perfectly fine for, some, for a, a mom who's breastfeeding, who's keto-adapted, to go 20 hours a day and have a four-hour feeding window. I think that's perfectly safe, perfectly natural, normal. Humans have done that for millennia. It's not dangerous at all, but don't be doing a three, five, or seven day fast while you're oh, breastfeeding. No. That, that's not intermittent. That's not the intermittent fast. You couldn't without about. killing somebody, anyways. Uh, you probably you don't. Yeah. You'd be so hungry. Yeah. All right, Miss DFM says I'm starting keto and I'm a single mom of three kids. Bless you. 
Uh, can we all do it together? They're 16, mm -hmm. 14, and 11. They're all mm -hmm. moaning and groaning, but mm -hmm. is it healthy for them? Yeah, it's it, it is the proper human diet, meat and veg. That That's what keto is. Keto does is not all the keto products, the pills, powder shakes, bars. None of that stuff is necessary. You don't need any of that stuff. It costs too much, and it's not necessary. You can do a perfect keto diet with your kids with hot dogs, bologna, ground beef, and whatever list of vegetables they like. That's perfect. <clears throat> Perfection. And I've got a video on YouTube about uh, keto on a budget and carnivore on a budget. Now, if you've got picky kids and they only want to eat meat, guess what? That's on the proper human diet spectrum. They can do that. And there's so many things that your kids like already. So well, I have a meatloaf recipe on my YouTube and my blog. It's amazing. Throw it is it. divine. Kids like ketchup. So buy the Primal Kitchen ketchup, throw it on there. You yeah. have to tell them. That'll be the most expensive thing in the meatloaf. Everything else is just cheap like ground beef. Also have a chicken nugget recipe. Maria Emery. I'm over you. <laughs> over you. <laughs> That's what you say. So weird all day long. He's driving me crazy. Maria Emmerich, she does lots of recipes that are free on her blog, and she has two boys. Yep. And she has tons of kid recipes, so go make sure you check out hers. Absolutely. It's MariaMindBodyHealth.com, I, I think. think. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> somebody How did you remember that? In. Yeah, somebody put Maria's <laughs> website in the in the comments. I don't. Please. I don't know. But okay. yes, one hundred percent safe and one hundred percent nutritious. Absolutely, do this now. And oh, I was going to say that you don't have to do it overnight. You don't have to be a keto Nazi. You can transition them to keto over a few weeks. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Red Wright says you helped me eliminate Nash and eventually uh, and an eventual liver transplant. That's right. Huge deal. That's right. Uh, buy your books for others. Carb intake uh, is down to 105 carbs and 45 grams of sugar daily. Your videos are priceless things. Oh, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. See, so guys, that's the kind of stuff that you need to be sharing because I hope somebody else with Nash, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, is watching right now. They see that comment, they're going to be like, wait, what? This diet fixes that? I didn't know you could fix it with a diet. My doctor didn't tell me that. That's the power of sharing your story. Gary says, any data on people reversing cancer on carnivore? There are actually ongoing studies right now studying not only slowing down cancer, uh, maybe reversing cancer, but also it looks like that when you're in ketosis, that chemotherapy and radiation therapy work exponentially better on you and are not as hard on you, but are still very hard on the cancer. Tons of research being done in that area. More and more oncologists or cancer specialists are starting to recommend keto for their patients because they, they can see this research ongoing in their in their oncology journals. Yes, the picture's blurry. If you didn't know, there's a snowstorm. Yeah. And we have satellite internet. So yeah. yeah. Sorry. 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 Uh, Wynette says, is keto safe for a patient who's had a cabbage three times? hundred percent. If the keto, which is meat and veg, is the proper human diet, and every human should eat that. And I don't care if somebody's had nine bypasses. They, they should not be drinking Coke and eating lots of highly processed grains. That's not natural or normal or healthy for a human being. They need a very low-carbohydrate diet, and they need a diet that's very nutrient-dense, and that's keto. Christy Alley says, how do you know which one you should do, keto or carnivore? Mm. Well, Christy Alley, that's a very personal thing. and You have to mm. know what you can sustain. That's the number one thing. Can you sustain carnivore? Because if you can't, then the chance of you doing carnivore and swinging all the way back to the to crab jail. diet yeah. is going to probably happen, and that's not okay. Yep. We don't want that. So start out with keto, <clears throat> maybe – Give that a year or two years, depending on how you feel. Cut down lower carb if you want to. If you're hitting your goals, then that's what's important. So it's 100%. just how do you feel and can you sustain it? Yep. That's very important. I, I do better with a carnivore diet. Uh, keto helped me a ton, meat and veg. But when I eliminated the veg, I did even better. And I, I, I will never go back to eating veg on a daily basis, probably for the rest of my life, because I feel so good on meat only. But today on YouTube, I had somebody comment on one of my videos and said, Dr. Barry, I tried carnivore. I just don't feel good on it. I, I don't feel like I do well on it, but I was thriving on keto. And I said, 
go back to keto. Keto is on the proper human diet spectrum, 100%. Safe, healthy, and fine for you. If you, if you were thriving on keto, stay on keto. There's nothing magic about carnivore. It just works better for some of us, but perhaps not for all of us. All right. How many carbs, Bobby wants to know, are recommended for keto? If you're young and metabolically healthy and slender, you might be able to eat 100 total grams of carbohydrates a day. If you're a little older or you're starting to get a little bit of prediabetes or you've got some autoimmune or inflammatory conditions, you may need to lower that down to 50 total grams. Now, if you're morbidly obese, you need to limit your carbs to 20 total grams daily. That's how you're going to get your insulin low enough to burn off that stubborn fat that you thought you were never going to get rid of. Some people have to keep it at 20 total grams or less a day to get all the benefits and to keep them. Other people can start to reintroduce some keto friendly carbs after they've reached their goal. And that seems to work fine for them. Other people have to ratchet the carbs down to almost zero, which is carnivore in order to get the maximum benefit and to retain the benefit you kind of get to play around with that. So if you would just figure out how many carbs are you eating a day right now on average. And, and if you're, if you're meeting your goals, keep doing that. But if you're not getting to your goals as fast as you want to cut the carbs in half and do that for a month and see what changes. Terry says, uh, I just got diagnosed with throat cancer. Mm. That sucks, man. Sorry. Sorry man. Uh, how many carbs should I be eating? I've been on keto now and on carnivore. I plan on staying. I'm carnivore through my treatment plus fasting. Do you have any advice? Yeah, I would. I would. I would say 100%. Don't eat more than 20 total grams of carbs a day. Cancer loves sugar. I've got a YouTube video about cancer and sugar that you can check out on YouTube. Uh, if you want to stay carnivore, I think that's 100% fine as well. Try to get some organ meat if you can, because you need that extra nutrition. Um, cod liver is a great way to get liver. It's very mild if you don't like beef liver. Chicken liver is the next most mild. You can fry it with pork panko and bacon grease. It's freaking delicious. You need your meat and liver. If you want to add some veg, you can, but not too much. Debbie says, what are your ideas regarding net carbs versus total carbs? Uh, Net carbs is a game that people who make keto products love to play because <clears throat> our good friend, Kim Howerton, the ketonist, she actually did an experiment and she, she said, okay, I'm going to eat 20 net gram, net total, right? 20 grams of to total of net carbs a day. And she was able to eat 110 grams of total carbs in a 20 net gram day. You understand? So, yeah, they love to put chicory fiber and oat fiber and corn fiber. And they say all oh, these fibers, they don't count towards your, your carb total. But many of these fibers are, are partially digestible in your small intestine. And you do absorb the glucose from some of those. So like oat, oat fiber, chicory fiber, and corn fiber, it's not four grams, uh, four calories per gram, but it's like two and a half calories of carbohydrate per gram of carbohydrate. So yeah, the fiber does count for, and for some of us, it seems to count a lot more. So we just cut through the bullshit and we say count total carbs and keep your total carbs 20 or less because nobody fails on that. It works for everybody. Amy says, do whole sardines count as nose to tail? Yes, they do. That's a very good question. Make sure the skin's on it and the bones are in it and the guts are in it and the brains and the eyeballs and just crunch them and eat them. Put some mustard on there, 100%. No I could eat that. anchovies without all any. All day, right? Man, I love all some day. anchovies. Do we have any anchovies? No, I kind of want some. I'll have to buy some. <laughs> Hilda, on a carnivore diet, you don't eat anything but meat? No veggies, no fruit? That's carbs. right. That's right. It is is only animal products. Some people will include eggs and butter and cheese and uh, some dairy because that comes from an animal. Other people only eat animal muscle. Some people only eat beef. Right. And some some carnivores feel their best when they're only eating beef. Some carnivores add a lot of organ meat to their carnivore diet. Some don't eat any organ meat. Yeah. You get to play around with this. There's but a yeah. spectrum. If you want some veg in your diet, then you can eat ketovore, which she has a, a video about, or you can eat keto, and that's fine. You can have your veg on either of those diets. 
Uh, and you may do fine on one of those. You may not need to eat carnivore. For some of us, carnivore is therapeutic. We only eat that way because, well, we love the meat. But also, that's when our health is at its best. Some people have to. Yeah, some people have to. Edward, uh, he doesn't, doesn't have a question, but I just want to give him a shout out because goat cheese is great. It is great. And I think a lot of people don't realize how great it is. And also that most of us are not as sensitive to goat cheese mm -hmm. as we are to cow products, milk, dairy, all of that in general. Because explain. Yeah, so mo most of the, the bovine dairy products in the United States, cow milk, is A1 milk, A1, right? <laughs> but uh, so goat milk and sheep milk and some cow milk, but not the, the minority is A2. And that's, that's how you describe the, the shape of the casein molecule. Some people are very inflamed by A1 milk, but A2 milk doesn't seem to bother them much. And so if you think you have a milk allergy and it, the only milk you've ever tried is cow milk, you should try some goat milk or some sheep's milk, camel milk, uh, venison milk, if you can get the deer to hold still. Do you want to tell them your plans with? Right. So <clears throat> I plan on getting a Nubian. And that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Because I was reading. <laughs> getting a Nubian <clears throat> and getting our own milk, making our own cheese. And we'll, yeah, that'll be fun to watch me do. Because I can't wait. For, uh, I'm excited about two things. Watching me milk a goat. That's one. And then eating the eating cheese. The cheese. Yeah. Yeah, so Nubians are known because they have way more fat than the other breeds of goat. And obviously, we want to make cheese from it, so we and need butter. the higher fat. And, and you can make goat butter, which I'm, I, I have heard that from him yeah, for so years. Oh. Find me goat butter. So yeah. we're going to make our own, and that's going to be a lot of work. But I think that it will be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get Terry's question? <clears throat> oh, Terry. Yeah. Terry, do you drink green tea? I don't. I don't drink a lot of tea. I'm more of a coffee person. No. I, but as long as the green tea is sugar free, carbohydrate free, I think it's fine. It, it may have some polyphenols and yeah. phytochemicals that, that help you in some small way. Well, it's also, though, I, I hear a lot of stuff about how bad some green teas can be also. Right. Yeah. And don't buy it in the plastic bottle because it's probably the worst type of green tea. Make sure you're yeah. getting a legit good green tea. tea. Yeah. yeah. And don't sweeten it. I prefer black tea myself oh, what oh this is a good question Le Luke. will carnivore diet improve my vitiligo yeah that's a good question and so vitiligo is in large part an autoimmune condition right <clears throat> thousands of people have reached out to us both patients and people online saying that their autoimmune condition improved on a carnivore diet even on keto and Joe Rogan, you ever heard of him? He has vitiligo and he's tried carnivore twice. He's done carnivore challenge months two times and both times he said his, his vitiligo improved. And so I don't know if he's full carnivore right now, but uh, yeah, we've, we've heard this many times that vitiligo improves. You actually start to produce your, your spots get smaller. You start to produce melanin around the edges and your spots get smaller. Um, Nasheen, I'm doing IVF this year and mostly ketovore, but moving on to carnivore, I don't want to gain too much weight during pregnancy. Do you have any tips? Yeah, eat, eat, eat the proper human diet until you're full. Don't eat until you're hungry. And uh, good luck on the IVF. Would you add anything? Uh, do carnivore if you can. Yeah, Fat, fatty meat carnivore. Prior to IVF, because uh, there's a lot of research that says doing that helps. It's what I did. I went through IVF. Yeah. I don't know if you know that or not, but that's how I got pregnant. And I got pregnant on the first try, which is almost unheard of. It's a very small percentage of people who get pregnant on the first try. I had to do it because of my thyroid. And I did carnivore, Dr. Kiltz, K-I-L-T-Z. He's an IVF specialist out of New York. Mm -hmm. He talks a lot about eating yep. meat only and promoting that for IVF and for pregnancy too. But if you can't because of aversions, then keto is fine. Yep, 100%. Uh, um, Miyui, what is your take on low carb carnivore diet and competitive cycling? Uh, actually, uh, competitive cyclers are more and more going to keto because of one of the, one of the ketones you produce is beta hydroxybutyrate. 
And actually cyclist teams at the very elite levels have been doping with BHB for a few years now. And so then they're like, well, why do we have, because it's so expensive to buy really high quality beta hydroxybutyrate, which is one of the three ketones. Why don't we just eat keto? And then we're, we're full of, of ketones anyway. We don't have to then pay a thousand dollars per race to buy the ketones. We can just make them ourselves. And so it's very common for long, long distance runners to use the ketones that a ketogenic diet produces. And for the elite cyclists, more and more, they're eating keto all the time because their performance is better. Trying to remember her name, mm. but there is a woman we've met on the low carb cruise who specifically talks about cycling. Stephanie. What's her last name? Mm. I can't remember. Somebody can't knows what I'm talking about, but she has done a lot of research. She works with cyclists that do long, long distance, and she has a lot of information about yeah, that. She absolutely. specifically does that. Rebecca wants to know, can keto help with Parkinson's and bipolar yeah, disorder? Great question. It looks like every time we do research with a low carbohydrate diet for some neurological condition, it helps. Uh, Parkinson's, there's actually been research done with low carb diets and it improves the symptoms of Parkinson's. Uh, bipolar disorder, we have multiple friends who used to have severe bipolar disorder and keto or carnivore, the one, put it into remission. Most of them are off all their meds now. Corliss says, hey, Corliss. I don't hear you say much about canned tuna. Is that okay for you? Yeah, canned tuna is fine. Uh, tuna is a kind of an upper level uh, predator in the ocean. And so if you're eating huge tuna, there could be some buildup of cadmium and mercury in the tuna because uh, you, what you want to do is eat small fish from the ocean because they haven't had time to build up a lot of mercury and cadmium. Uh, but when a fish eats another fish and then a fish eats that fish and then a fish eats that fish, you're building up all that, the heavy metals. And so swordfish, tuna, I, I love them, but I don't eat them as much. I'd much prefer to eat the sardines and anchovies and, and herring, smaller fish that are, have not eaten 50,000 fish in their lifetime. If you are going to buy it in the can, I would suggest you buy Wild Planet yeah, because it's yeah. sustainably sourced and yeah. it's just it's better all the yeah. way around. I wild Tuna has, I mean, Wild Planet has great canned seafood. I love canned tuna. Yeah, I love it, but I just don't eat it much. Tuna fish <clears throat> salad is so good. Okay. We went over on time. Oh, my. <laughs> I was having more. We got excited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much to our Facebook supporters. And thank you to our patrons on patreon.com. You guys are our keto carnivore family and we love you. And we we're so thankful that you're on this journey with us to help the world understand that there is a spectrum of a proper human diet that every single one of us should eat and that we benefit from when we do eat that way. So thank you so much for your support and sticking with us. Thanks for liking us on Facebook, following us on Facebook, subscribing to both of our channels. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's in the link up here and down here, depending on Facebook, YouTube yeah. and sharing, because yeah. that is the biggest way to support us. Sharing videos with a friend, a loved one, a family member. 100%. That's a yeah. good way for you to show love for them and show love for us. Yeah. And if you think your loved one or friend would like to hear from a big headed, smart ass doctor, then share my video. But if you think they'd much rather hear from a beautiful, well spoken young lady, then share Nisha's video. Either way, you're going to help them and you're going to help us. And we, we appreciate it so much. Sometimes I'm well spoken, sometimes I stutter. Depends on the day. Whatever. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to share this video. You can even share this one. And if you missed some of the stuff we talked about earlier, you can always go back and watch this again. And we'll be back next Monday. No. no? We will not be oh, here next yeah. Monday, sir. We're going to be out of town next Monday. We could maybe try to do StreamYard together. We'll, we'll try to stream it. Maybe that'll yeah. work. So we haven't actually said anything about this. Yeah. So next week, <laughs> I'm going to be in Costa Rica. Uh, we're filming a television series about reversing type 2 diabetes with the proper human diet, with keto. 
with carnivore. And so I'm, I'm going to be there. Maria Emmerich is going to be there. Dr. Jason Fung is involved. I don't know if he's going to be in Costa Rica or if he'll be remote. And we've got several other people who are going to be involved at this in this. We're so excited. It's called reverse reversed and it's about reversing type two diabetes. So if you're watching this and you're like, wait, you can't reverse. Yeah, you can. We're going to make a TV show about it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's where I'll be. We'll try to stream yard if we can. And, and that way I can see you and you can. You'll have to teach me how to Oh, okay. I will. I will. Okay, guys. We'll Thanks so much. Next week. Maybe. See ya next week. Same. Maybe. 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 Love you. Mean it.